In the conclusion of the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto writes, The network is robust in its unstructured simplicity. Nodes work all at once with little coordination. They do not need to be identified since messages are not routed to any particular place and only need to be delivered on a best effort basis. Nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting the proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. They vote with their CPU power, expressing their acceptance of valid blocks by working on extending them and rejecting invalid blocks by refusing to work on them. Any needed rules and incentives can be enforced with this consensus mechanism. If Bitcoin fulfills its promise, these, the final words of Bitcoin's foundational text, will be memorized and recited by future generations of schoolchildren. However, the ability of Bitcoin to fulfill that promise hinges on an understanding of this final passage by our current generation. Governance is a much discussed term in the realm of Bitcoin. As Satoshi himself says, Bitcoin by design is a network of unstructured simplicity. For those of us raised in a global culture in the digital age, immersed in a web of corporate and governmental hierarchies, the idea of unstructured simplicity creates a sense of anxiety. Surely, we say, additional effort and care should be taken to plan and foster a more sturdy foundation, some structure for the governance of this all-important network, one which we hope will form the backbone of our collective economic destiny. And yet, to make such a suggestion is to ignore Satoshi's own answer. Indeed, his final word on the matter is the final sentence of the white paper. To govern is to control or to regulate, to enforce a set of rules. Satoshi says of the system described in the white paper, any needed rules and incentives can be enforced with this consensus mechanism. The word enforced to many will seem out of place. Nodes working with little coordination can leave and rejoin at will with each node having complete sovereignty over which blocks it will accept or reject. How, you might ask, is that the description of a mechanism that can enforce rules or incentives? The key is in the distinction between planned change and emergent change. Planned change can best be seen as a prescription, a set of rules to be followed to get from point A to point B. Emergent change can best be seen as a description of the route taken from point A to point B, once point B has actually been reached. The design of your car is the result of planned change. The design of your cardiovascular system is the result of emergent change, evolution. Economics at its best is the study of emergent change. From Smith to Hayek, the greatest minds in the field have been masters of describing the current reality of a given market phenomenon and tracing its evolutionary history back to some previous iteration. Those iterations, those economic technologies that survive and thrive, gold coinage is one example, are emergent realities, successful experiments that took hold. As with all emergent evolutionary mutations, all new innovations, the vast majority fail. Only a tiny minority of innovations are actually improvements on the current system and progress into the future. Economics at its worst is a recipe for planned change. The prescriptions of Marx and Keynes have been shown to be woefully inadequate. Had they been effective, there would be no need for Bitcoin to have ever been created. Biological evolution, a process of emergent change, does indeed enforce rules and incentives. Any given organism, yourself included, can only exist in an environment presenting an incredibly tiny band of possibilities. Too hot, too cold, too little or too much barometric pressure or gravity, anything but an almost perfect mix of gases for you to breathe, all but the narrowest spectrum of electromagnetic radiation and... You're dead. 
In order for you and I to live to see tomorrow, never mind reproduce, there are a stringent set of rules that we must obey. That such rules exist are the very basis for a belief in a higher intelligence, a prime mover, a god or gods. Darwin, in his book On the Origin of Species, illustrated that, in fact, no supreme intelligence was necessary. These rules and their accompanying incentives can be enforced by a mechanism he called natural selection. Evolutionary biologists have expanded and refined the description of the mechanism, but the mechanism itself has not changed. We are bound to the rules which govern life. So too are we bound to the rules which govern economics. Economics is the interaction of biological humans and our psychological constructs. Human psychology is itself the product of natural selection. Bitcoin is an abstraction of natural market selection. It is a self-sustaining system that needs no planning to evolve into a complex economic system. The basic law of life is acquire more energy than you expend and reproduce yourself. Be fruitful and multiply. That's it. From that simple law, life evolved from simple single-celled organisms to humans and every other creature that has ever walked, crawled, slithered, or swam on this planet. The law which sustains a Bitcoin network is also simple. Acquire more value from finding blocks than it costs you to find those blocks. A Bitcoin network is bootstrapped, sustained, and secured with this simple rule. Satoshi writes in the incentive section of the white paper. By convention, the first transaction in a block is a special transaction that starts a new coin owned by the creator of the block. This adds an incentive for nodes to support the network and provides a way to initially distribute coins into circulation since there is no central authority to issue them. The steady addition of a constant amount of new coins is analogous to gold miners expending resources to add gold to circulation. In our case, it is CPU time and electricity that is expended. Because the consensus rules written into Bitcoin software can be changed at any time, and any miner can choose to run those new rules, Satoshi understood that the blockchain would inevitably fork into different variants as species also fork and evolve. As with biological mutations, some forks are destined to survive and others are destined to die. The choice of which fate awaits a given fork is up to those expending CPU time and electricity. Because a newly arrived miner has to be able to find consensus with the other existing miners with minimal coordination the correct chain is considered to be the one that has had the most CPU time and electricity expended to build it, the chain that displays the most cumulative proof of work. Satoshi uses an often misunderstood rhetorical flourish in describing this rule in the proof of work section of the white paper. He writes, the proof of work also solves the problem of determining representation in majority decision making. If the majority were based on one IP address, one vote, it could be subverted by anyone able to allocate many IPs. Proof of work is essentially one CPU, one vote. The majority decision is represented by the longest chain, which has the greatest proof of work effort invested in it. Upon encountering the word vote, both in this section and the conclusion, many infer that Bitcoin somehow is based on democratic principles. It is not. Satoshi is not describing a process of planned governance where the will of the majority is enforced on the minority. The reason that a node follows the chain with the most proof of work is because that is the chain, due to the rules of Bitcoin, that will survive and on which future coins with market value can be mined. This mechanism, like natural biological selection, has no right or wrong set of rules. There are only those rules which miners accept, believing such rules will lead to profit, and those they reject, believing such rules will not. It is in this way that any needed rules and incentives can be enforced with this consensus mechanism. The needs of the network 
just like the needs of any economy, are emergent. Profit is acquired by creating value and exchanging that value with others. Those entities that are profitable survive. Those that are not profitable cease to exist. Anything a miner does in pursuit of profit, just as anything an organism does in pursuit of survival and reproduction, is an action aligned with the sustainability of the system. The brilliance of Satoshi's revelation is that it is a system that grows stronger through each individual network actor single-mindedly pursuing their individual long-term self-interest. The network is robust in its unstructured simplicity. For so long, our culture has demanded that in order to prosper, we must control others. We must govern for the greater good. But Bitcoin is a manifestation of the greatest good, the governance of emergent change. I marvel at Bitcoin as Darwin marveled at that which was revealed to him when he wrote, there is grandeur in this view of life with its several powers, having been originally breathed by the creator into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved.